Hey Radiant Souls, let's talk about probably a pretty unpopular topic, but it's one that we don't talk about a lot in our culture. And uh, I think we avoid it for a lot of different reasons, but it's prevalent on my mind now. Um, so let's talk about death. Um, if you are not affiliated with a religious doctrine or an indigenous culture perhaps, most of us in our society who don't fall in one of those categories, we kind of have no structure or no template or, or no process to follow for our grief. And in some regards, I think that's beautiful because it allows for an individual expression, but it can also leave us feeling a little bit unsupported. So I was asked recently by someone, how do I as a psychic medium experience the death of a loved one? And it's a great question and it's timely right now for those who don't know my father passed away about two and a half weeks ago and um, you know the perception of some may be that because I am a medium and we'll talk about that in a second but because I can communicate with spirit and those who have crossed over or passed on that you know death should be easy peasy something that Maybe I don't grieve, maybe I handle it and roll with it and, and it's just easy. Um, so I just wanna talk about that a little bit and, and let me also say here at the beginning, this is my experience, these are my opinions. You may have something completely different as they say, your miles may vary. But I just wanted to share my perspective because I feel like it's a valid one, all of ours are valid. And it was a great question that I received. So. First, let me talk about what is a medium. If, if you don't know, you may hear the term psychic medium. Um, a psychic is someone who kind of is in tune and can receive information from the environment around them. A medium is someone who can do that as well, but can also connect and communicate and observe and interact with beings. So it could be people, pets, other beings, we won't get into that, but um, who are not incarnated in a physical world. So they are in, you might consider it another dimension, another space, another world, another way of being. They're not physically here with us. So all mediums are psychic, not all psychics are mediums. I believe these are abilities any of us can learn and develop. Some of us have it naturally, just like someone may have a natural affinity for math. They may be really good at uh, like mechanics and assembling things. They may be really good at music. We can all learn those abilities, but some of us just have it more innately. So for me, I was uh, I'm a medium for as long as I can remember and um, going on. We're gonna talk about age too, goodness. Uh, going on 41 years now, because I had my first mediumship experience when I was six. So it's been a minute. I know I look all of 23 or something, but uh, not really. Um, so it's something that's been with me my whole life and it's very natural for me, but I learned as I would talk about it with people, it's maybe not so normal and natural for a lot of other people. And some people even consider it like a little scary or a little freaky, or it just doesn't fit their particular worldview and that's fine. Um, so if this doesn't resonate with you or it's making you a little uncomfortable, um, you don't need to watch take what you will from it if if it hits if it resonates perfect if it doesn't no problem like i said you may have a completely different experience So my sister Wendy passed away when she was nine, I was six, and um, she had severe cerebral palsy and didn't live with us. She had full-time nursing care. The night that she passed away, she came to me in a dream and showed me very vividly how she would be leaving, but my mom, my dad, and I would be staying. And it was just very clear to me at that age, for whatever reason, that that was what was going on. And from then on, 
I could communicate with her in spirit. Now, in her physical life, she was nonverbal, but in spirit, I could communicate to her just like anybody else. And I want to say that I'm not sharing any of this to be like, oh, I'm so great with these abilities. Because um, again, to me, they're natural. Um, and I'm not trying to brag about it. I just want to expose and start the conversation about what is possible and how we can stay connected to our loved ones, even when they're not here in the physical world with us. So to get back to the question of how, as a psychic medium, I experienced the death of a loved one a couple of weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks, my dad passed away um, after a couple of hospital stays. Um, and coincidentally, only I don't believe in coincidences, he decided, he made the decision to withdraw care on what was or would have been Wendy's 50th birthday. So there was that kind of resonance to the day, which made it very sacred and very special. Um, as he was in the process of transitioning, I witnessed him being in both locations at once. So I was in the hospital room with his physical body, which was still somewhat responsive. He would nod or he would move on occasion, but he was mostly asleep. And I could also witness his spirit. Um, and he was sending me messages that I could convey to his wife, my mom, um, different things that I didn't know, different stories, different scenes, things she had spoken to him about in the past couple of days that I didn't know about. Um, all of that was kind of coalescing and happening at the same place. So the veil was very thin as it is when one is transitioning and I could see both sides of his existence, which was amazing and beautiful and, and I'm so honored to have witnessed that. Even in that amazing beauty and that sacred moment and everything that went with it and me knowing uh, without a shadow of a doubt for myself that there is an afterlife, that our loved ones are in another place. They have, as some indigenous cultures say, they have walked on they have moved to the next. It's, it's a little bit like shape-shifting. They're just not in a physical body anymore, but they still exist. Even though I know that, that doesn't mean that I don't still have grief and that I don't have the human side of things. I still miss my dad terribly. I still am walking through that process and I say that as raw and vulnerable as this is because I want to talk a little bit about when we witness someone else's grief, how we can comment on their social media, how we can interact with them, what, what can we say? Because I've seen some things recently that um, make me feel like we don't really know. We're not really sure how to respond or what to talk about. So um, for instance, you know, I think, and again, this is all my perspective, my experience, my opinion, but I think the best thing you can say is, uh, you know, you have my condolences, you have my love, I'm here for you if you need me. Or I've walked through this myself, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. And leave it at that. Maybe share a memory that you have of their loved one, if you knew them. When we go beyond that, we kind of get into a delicate situation. So um, I'm going to start with if you are also someone who communicates with spirit and can see across the veil, don't share that, please. Don't say, oh, I see your loved one and they're doing fine. Someone may not be ready to hear that. Someone may also take offense to the fact that you're communicating with their loved one without any permission. It's just not a healthy energetic boundary. So while it is incredibly well-intentioned, you don't know how the other person is going to perceive that. So just don't. And, and don't really look for that other person. If you don't know them, don't make that connection. It, it's, not, um, it's not ethical. Uh, again, as well-intentioned as it may be. Um, another thing I've seen recently is someone saying, you know, I'm really glad you gave yourself a couple of days to heal. A couple of days. Um, that, again, I think just comes from 
not understanding how grief comes and goes and, and it undulates and there are good days and bad days and someone just really wants to like tidy it up because we like things that are nice and tidy and done. Um, but that kind of makes someone feel like, well, if I didn't get through it in a couple of days, then there must be something wrong with me. So I would recommend not saying that. Um, saying things like, and this goes for the death of a, a pet as well. I see that a lot as an animal communicator when people kind of say, oh, it really sucks. There's nothing like it. I, this is one of my, one of the ones that makes me cringe every time. And I'm sorry if you're someone who said this, but it just doesn't feel good to be the recipient of it. I, someone might say, I lost my dog 25 years ago and I'm still not over it. Well, for someone who's just lost someone, they're standing at this abyss and they're thinking, shit, that's the rest of my life I'm gonna be in this state. Um, so what I think I'm saying with most of these is keep your personal experiences to yourself. Don't project that onto the other person. It may be helpful, but it may also really make them feel crappy or even more sad. So just support them as best you can. Share your love, share your um, support, and if they want to reach out, that's an appropriate time to maybe share those things if if they say they're ready for that um one of my poems that i came across not my personal poem but i was reading some poetry a couple of days after dad passed away and and one of my favorites is a poem from emily dickinson and i won't quote the whole thing because i wouldn't do it justice but there's a line in it that says it's talking about death being like uh like we're all when we're in physical form we're like birds and birds migrate and move on and when we die we're just migrating to a different place and my favorite line in the poem is for those of us who are left those of us who are grieving the loss of a loved one and it is we are the birds who stayed so we're the ones who are still here they've migrated they've walked on they've moved on to something else and it can be beautiful and sacred and it can kick your ass all at the same time. It's all rolled up. Um, it may feel different for you from one minute to the next. Um, don't judge yourself for how you go through it, um, but find, find a way to get yourself support if you can. Speaking with someone, finding a friend who just can, can bear witness to it for you and allow you to just be there and be gentle with yourself. So that's my little spiel about the super fun topic <laughs> of death and grief and how to walk through it, how to support others who are walking through it. And there's some strange nature noises back here. Uh, there's some pelicans building a nest over there. I don't know if you've seen them flying around, but this is one of my favorite places to come sit on this trail because the bench that I'm on, I'm gonna leave you with one more quote. It has a plaque on it that says, for a time, I rest in the grace of the world and I am free. So with that, I leave you to the rest of your day. I hope it's a great one. Bye.